changed the structure of the armed forces. He has changed the central command of the armed forces. He has stopped illegally awarded tenders for the supply of goods to the armed forces. He has embarked on career-threatening measures to rebuild the Lions of Africa. The armed forces were once among the strongest army in Africa, but they fell apart in 1991 at the fall of the military regime. Everything the armed forces owned was destroyed, including their glory-giving way to mushrooming clan militias, civil unrest, and rival group fighting. A quarter century later, after the federal government was constituted, there was no force to defend it and the country. Hence, the need for foreign troops. Amazon. Billions of dollars were spent on foreign forces for the 10 or so years they were in the country. But the government of the day never asked themselves until when these forces would be relied on. 50 years, a century, or forever? When he first came to office, Prime Minister Hassan Ali Khair held a meeting with commanders of the armed forces. It then dawned on him that no one could account for the exact number of troops, their ammunition, areas of deployment and their mode of operation. He therefore embarked on the biggest security exercise, armed forces reforms, an exercise that was hitherto not easy to undertake. There were over 30,000 troops on government payroll, paid salaries by the government, as well as food rations and ammunition, but upon actual verification could not be accounted for. Biometric registration as a result, the government embarked on a biometric registration exercise that captured the biometric data of individual troops to avoid double registration. The exercise took seven months to complete the registration of all members of the armed forces across the country. Commander of the armed forces was for the first time able to identify each officer's full names, age, rank, health status, area of deployment, his bank details, official contacts, and his next of kin contact. However, several members of the armed forces dissented and left the front line, and therefore the armed forces reform process was politicized. Several government officials previously involved in the process backtracked after realizing the extent of sensitivity of the process. But the prime minister answered them then with a quote that became popular within government circles. Even if it would mean losing my position, I will not relent from building a strong national army. Can we be a legitimate government if we listen to politicians with vested interests? The registration unearthed the rot in the armed forces. After it was realized over 10,000 ghost officers were on government payroll, leading to the loss of $2 million per month since salaries were withdrawn in cash from the central bank, making it prone to embezzlement. All members of the armed forces now receive their salaries without any intermediaries between each officer and the central bank, but directly through their bank accounts. Food rations. Delivery of food rations was also marred with corruption, making it difficult to account for. All suppliers were suspended and tenders re-advertised with a view to attracting quality suppliers based on actual troop numbers. This was another bull the PM has taken by the horns and succeeded. Officers are now assured of constant and enough quality food rations without any embezzlement of government funds. New Commanders the Armed Forces administrative structure was that of the Soviet Union forces. Since the Soviet Union played a key role in the establishment of the Somali National Army, but in order to modernize the forces, the administrative structure of NATO, which is currently the leanest and most modern in the world, was adopted. No one has hitherto attempted to improve the central command of the armed forces. Open recruitment was done for top positions in finance, logistics, and personnel. The positions were filled by youthful graduates of the armed forces colleges who extensively improved the forces administratively. 
Following a training needs assessment, special trainings were conducted to produce quality forces. Most of the trainings were offered by Turksong, while new ones would be conducted by the UK Training Centre. Registration of the armed forces is now complete. All their needs and requirements met. Corruption was contained. Quality trainings were given and professional commanders installed. Today, operations are led by Somali Armed Forces, while this was previously done by AMISOM. The reform strategies and their outcomes was welcomed by the public. The forces help people on one hand and fight the enemy on the other. The reform was also lauded by Somalia's international partners, some of whom previously suspended their support for the National Army. The U.S. government, which offered the biggest military support to Somalia, suspended its support in 2017 following massive corruption in the armed forces. But following successful implementation of Kair's reform agenda and strategies, they have acknowledged the tangible results, and the U.S. has now resumed its support. The armed forces reforms called for tough decision-making, honesty, and selection of professional commanders with security background and free from corruption. Kair has spearheaded this journey, which could take years and needs to be maintained constantly in order to rebuild the Lions of the Horn of Africa.